Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. It is indeed an honor, privilege, and pleasure to have with us on this show Dr. Ram Saroop, who is the Chief Executive Officer for the Guyana Office for Investment. Welcome to the show, Dr. Ram Saroop. Pleasure. Good. So for those of you who are listening worldwide, Dr. Ram Saroop is a well-known uh, international personality. His bio is phenomenal and we'll talk to him a little bit about his international connections and his connection with the U.S. Army, if I'm correct, and yes, all... Huh? Air Force. Uh, the Air Force, sorry, that was it. The Air Force, that is more interesting. And all his other um, involvement in other international projects and projects in Guyana. But presently, he's that special selected person in charge of investment in Guyana and what Guyana does, what is the future for 2021 to 2025, and the whole nine yards. I think we may have to hear a little bit about oil and gold from him there in Guyana and the services and the kind of things that his, uh, his management and administration right now under the presidency of Dr. His Excellency Dr. Irfan Ali. So once more, Dr. Ramsar, welcome to the show. Thank you. So it's a pleasure to have you with us and maybe you can share with our viewers a little bit about um, all the excitement in this new year with your position and what is your vision, what you hope to achieve, what the government hopes to achieve, etc. Well, the president did his uh, 2021 speech on New Year's, uh, Old Year's Night, uh, from New Year's to 2021 said that Guyana is about to leapfrog uh, in the economic uh, environment uh, 2021. It's our, it's our stepping stone. He calls for unity among our people, a unity in holding hands to develop our country together. Uh, we have an exciting uh, period ahead of us, as he described. His economic, aggressive, uh, economic agenda is very aggressive. He talked a lot about our modernization policies and our modernization of our infrastructure. He has described, you know, the growth uh, development uh, sectors that we will focus on over the next few years. And so as we look at Guyana, Guyana is the number one destination of investment. It's the de de number one destination for Guyanese around the world, investors around the world to pay very close attention in what we plan to achieve over the next few years. It's an exciting time in Guyana. And uh, once these economic uh, programs uh, uh, are started, for example, the president and the president of Guyana, Dr. Fanali, and the president of Suriname have signed the agreement to build the connection bridge between Suriname and Guyana. That opens a, a new trade, a quicker trade uh, environment between the two countries. We have outlined the establishment of the road to Brazil that will start hopefully this year that connects the fourth largest economy in the world to Guyana. Uh, with that road, we are looking at uh, building a deep water harbor um, that will allow transport economics to be much more prevalent uh, in this region. Uh, we're looking at, at expanding 2,000 miles of roads within Guyana. Guyana is 83,000 square miles, the size of Great Britain. You know, we've got less than a million people, but we have the resources that can see the expansion rapidly in development. So as our president talks about the investment opportunities in Guyana, we have seen a, uh, a rush to look at where investors fit, both locally and internationally, and I am excited to be part of a uh, parcel of this position in order to uh, see Guyana develop to where we know Guyana will be the, the region and be a, a strong force in South America and the world uh, in the next five years. So seeing that um, you have all this opening for investment there in Guyana, and because we have a lot of viewers worldwide, India, South Africa, all over the world, and the East, the Far East, the Arab world, etc., 
Could you kind of be a little more specific now? Like, what are some of the areas that um, people from the Middle East, uh, the Arab world, or the Indo Pak world might be interested in and might benefit more if they would look into those areas of investment in Guyana? Well, there, we know the oil industry, Guyana, you know, and the reserves right now, 9 billion barrels of oil. And that's growing exponentially in the next few years. We're in the top 20 of oil producing countries. And, uh, you know, it's about to explode even with the other blocks that have not even been explored yet. And so on the oil industry, it's still a long way to go. The downstream and upstream industries of the oil is still there available. But we're concentrating on our own sectors. Our agriculture sector is probably the largest, most exciting sector outside of oil and gas that Guyana will focus on uh, this year. The expansion of our poultry industry. We know, for example, the Arab world, you talk about the Arab world, are interested in halal meat. Yes. And, you know, Guyana has the capacity to, for investments to come in and do this on a large scale. We have large scale mass lands available to plant soya beans and corn for the stock feeds. Uh, we are resuscitating the sugar industry, not in the same way, but diversifying it in a way that it shows value added to what you do with sugar. We yes. know that, for example, in, in India, you mentioned India, that they are big into medical tourism. But Guyana is five hours, four hours from the United States. We are you know, quicker in terms of looking at medical tourism opportunities right here in Guyana, looking at having the right infrastructure, the right technical skills to embark on those projects. And I suppose, I, I suppose yeah. that the cost might be much more beneficial for these investors to invest in Guyana because uh, you know that Arabs, there are many Arab investors who have invested in the poultry area in Brazil, your neighbor, yes. right in Brazil. They have a lot of investment there in the poultry um, area, but fantastic. Yes, so as you were saying, we need to let the world know that Guyana might be much more economical in the investment with a lot more profit and benefits to international in investors. Yes, and if it's clear to where the puck is going to be, as when uh, Gretzky said, hockey flair, you know, as we bring energy costs, we're starting the gas ashore pipeline this year. Right. Energy costs in Guyana is going to come down by 50%. We're resuscitating the hydro project, the Mali Falls project. We're looking at wind power and solar power. So as energy costs comes down and you get the Deepwater Harbor done, the Brazil connection, uh, the Suriname connection, then again, getting your goods out of Guyana will be much more economical. The Caribbean, for example, you know, Trinidad and Barbados and the rest of the world, and rest of the Caribbean imports close to 10 billion US dollars worth of food every year prior to COVID-19. I'm not sure what the, the new number is, but Guyana can feed the Caribbean. So we that's where the agriculture sector, again, I say it's the most exciting sector that we can look at, because if you can capture in the Caribbean alone, forget North American, European, part of that $10 billion uh, opportunity, then your goods don't have to go far. You know, you've got to add the science to, to the agriculture and the technology to the agriculture, but that is about to grow. So the president uh, infrastructure modernization plan for Guyana and the, the aggressive way in which it is being implemented will allow investors want to, you know, feel safe in a, in a stable political environment. The fight for democracy that proves to the world that we will stand up to ensure democracy never fails in Guyana. Thanks to people in Guyana, the international community and the diaspora around the world has ensured that democracy uh, passed the test and we have a democratically elected government. We are looking, you know, our investment tax policy is very, very friendly to investors. You can actually repatriate all your profits with no penalty. We've got a, you know, the, the commercial court system. So we've got a very educated population. So we are an exciting destination. I think as, as investors pay attention to the, the process and what can happen with their investments coming together, we want also to ensure that investors know we have a lot of indigenous companies again that have done extremely well. So we're looking for partners with our local uh, 
content providers, you're looking at, at areas of joint ventures, they're wide opportunity. The private sector is willing and ready for investors coming from around the world to partner with them to look at how we expand our own industries. That is phenomenal. So the investments, uh, opportunities are very wide and the doors are very widely open for people to invest. That is interesting, very, very fantastic. So Dr. Ramsrup, we have already been speaking for 10 minutes. Could you imagine that 10 minutes have gone? So we're gonna go on a short break and when we come back, we would like you to share a little bit about your background, a little bit of some of the things you have done and your achievements and accomplishments, which of course led you to the position that you are in today in this phenomenal, unique position as a Chief Executive Officer for the Guyana Office for Investment. And um, we may probably discuss a little bit about some political areas of the future of Guyana under the leadership of Dr. Irfan Ali. So when we come back, we'll continue that conversation. And for our viewers out there, we have been speaking to Dr. Ram Saroop, the Chief Executive Officer for the Guyana Office for Investment. Stay tuned. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with him from the political aspect of things in Guyana, the future and the investment, the investment area of opportunities that exist. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmat TV for khutbahs, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya ayyuha rasul Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik Wa in lam taf'al Fa ma balagta risalatuhu Very deep Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To spread the message of the Quran And he told the Prophet And if you do not spread the message You did not fulfill the mission of the messenger So you and I are followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars, ten Quran, thirty dollars, a hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24-7 online. Once more, it is a pleasure to have with us on the show today, Dr. Ramsaroop, who is the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer for the Guyana Office for Investment. For those of you who have just tuned in, he is a phenomenal person with a one interesting background. And today he is in this um, powerful position here in the government of Guyana. So welcome back to the show, Dr. Ramsar. So as we were talking on investment, etc., before we continue a little bit on the political aspect and what you see as the future of the political situation in Guyana under the leadership of Dr. Irfan Ali, tell us a little bit for the benefit of our viewers worldwide, because as you know, we got viewers all over the world, uh, what are some of the, the the achievements and the places and the things you have done and been in the past? Well, I mean, it's uh, out there in the public domain, but, you know, I spent uh, my first almost 18 years in Guyana, grew up, um, you know, in, in rural areas, uh, learned a lot uh, from, you know, what, what Guyana can uh, potentially achieve. We grew up under a dictatorship environment in my time, and I vowed never to um, allow or be part of any dictatorship system ever again. I moved to the United States with my parents at that age and joined the U.S. military. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the reason for the U.S. military is, is fighting for freedom around the world. I got a chance to go to um, uh, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, to fight for the liberation of Kuwait. 
um, when they were taken over by dictatorships. So I know what it's like to fight for freedom and democracy. And, and uh, as I mentioned in the start of the program, seeing what Guyana stagnant economy five years uh, in the making up to uh, March 2nd election. Uh, we had a stagnant economy from March 2nd to August 2nd. We had a, uh, uh, an organization, a political party that stifled our nation to try to hold on to power. And a lot of us across the and around the world fought to ensure democracy prevails. And you know, so my background, I think, helped in that. I've been able to travel the world, 70 plus countries. I've seen what development is like. I see what poverty is like, and I want to see Guyana uh, along with all of us. And I was so happy that the president asked me to be part of this position because I believe with his vision and his knowledge and his ability to lead and measure our development, a lot of us can be part of that with him and to ensure that we implement the plan necessary. And ultimately, as he said, is for all of us in Guyana for the creation of wealth for Guyanese, to ensure all of us are employed. We have a, a healthy nation. We have a nation unified among all political sides that he wants to govern for all of Guyana. And any one of us living in Guyana right now is excited about that we have a president that believes in all of Guyana and believes in every citizen and is doing what it takes to make each of us feel part of nation building. And, and that's, I believe, is, is the most exciting journey we can have. Well, that is wonderful. That is really, really unique. And a man with your kind of travel and experience worldwide, the president, Dr. Irfan Ali, could not have chosen someone better than you to lead this area in the government and for the betterment of the people in Guyana. So um, what else do you see as some of the future vision in the political arena? And I, I, Maybe at this point you must give my salams when you speak to Dr. Irfan Ali, the president. Give, us, give him our salam wa alaikum. And maybe one day we can have him on the show to share some of his views and perspective. But from your point of view, what do you see as some of the major political changes or uh, a future of Guyana to that dictatorial kind of system that you guys had there in the past? Well, we are, we're definitely, as the president says, working on a unified approach to governance. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we believe in transparency and accountability, democracy. His, all his policies uh, from August 2nd outlines that. We have an opposition that continues to stagnate our, our country in, the, in ways that they should not be doing. Uh, hopefully that they come to their senses, recognize that we have a legitimate government. We have a government democratically elected and we have a, a president that is a president for all of Guyana. So I see us continue to build on democracy, build on the pillars of democracy, build on economic foundation pillars and springboards that is needed in order for Guyanese to see that our country is truly beneficial to all of us. And I, say, I believe on, on the president's side, he has um, outlined that charter and he's implementing that charter. And, and it is well um, taken by the, the people of Guyana that, that he will manage our country to our benefit. And, and as I travel around our nation and as I listen to people and I've seen our president interact with our citizens, I can tell you it's a new atmosphere. It's a, it's a calmer atmosphere. It's an exciting atmosphere. And that's why I feel from an investment standpoint, investors coming in into Guyana can understand and, and be assured that we want to be part of that group. We want to help work with them. We want them to benefit from it as much as we will benefit from it. And it's, it's a win-win situation. The private sector is the engine of growth and we know foreign direct, foreign direct investments and local direct investments is critical for our future development as a nation. Uh, the Exxons of the world has proven that they are coming, they've taken the risk. A lot of other com companies are coming in at new ventures that, you know, Ghana is still an emerging market, it's still a growing market, it's the fastest growing economy in the, in the world per capita in 2020. We expect that growth to continue. It's the place to be. And I, I'm excited that on the political, the economic, and, and the, the social side, we're bridging that interaction between the three, and ultimately, you're going to see that integrated approach benefit all of Guyana. 
So, seeing that you got a lot of um, Guyanese living in Europe, in Canada, of course, in America, North America, in Europe, etc., how do you see the connection and how do you intend to get them to invest in Guyana and get other people from other countries, as I said, wherever, Arabia, India, how, how, how do you plan on connecting with these people to motivate them so that they can invest in Guyana? Well, as you see, just on our investment portfolios over the next four or five years, the growth is going to be exponential. We going to need more people coming back to Guyana. The president has outlined a diaspora policy where he is putting an attractive incentive for the diaspora to come back home. We need that knowledge transfer. We need the integration among all our people around the world, Guyanese around the world. I tell a lot of Guyanese that, you know, a lot of them left under the dictatorship rule in the 80s, mm -hmm. 70s and 80s. A lot of their kids have grown up uh, outside of Guyana. And a lot of them had uh, impression of what Guyana should look like. Right. And they all dream of what Guyana should be. Guyana is their first love. They want to come back to Guyana. It's their first love. Now they get a chance under the leadership of that air financy, under the economic boom that we are seeing, they now get a chance to do it together, to do it with all of us. So the benefit of returning to Ghana, I returned to Ghana, you know, almost, you know, close to 15, 16 years ago, and I've never regretted that opportunity to come back and learn and be part of the growth. And then if I had to, somebody asked me, you know, years ago, I would tell folks I want to retire in Florida. Right now, I have no desire to retire in Florida. This is the place. If I can own, be on, on the water, I can see the growth in Guyana, I can see our people benefit. This is where we all need to be. And, and I am excited to see Guyanese around the world paying interest to in Guyana. We have the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that are, are put out the diaspora policy, and they will continue to expand that diaspora policy for us to come back home. So you see a lot of... Um a lot of benefits by them coming, investing, living, and they can they can have properties in America and still have properties in Guyana and benefit yes. from the two worlds, right? Yes, and the workforce, what, what we have to pay attention to, whether it's in Trinidad or in Barbados, our workforce and the, the growth that we're going at, the, the salary range is starting to climb, property ranges are starting to climb. So on a personal side, you will see maybe comparable salaries very soon mm. in many, many sectors. You're going to see property value probably even more greater than, than in North America and other parts of the Caribbean. So now is the time, the earlier you, you, you get into the process, the better off you can do in the long run. It's that, a good return on investment. That makes a lot of sense because when more people start coming and the investment starts growing, things are going to get much more expensive so they might as well get into it right now and benefit from all the opportunities and benefit fantastic yeah, the president has committed you know a couple areas i know diaspora is very interested in is uh, you know upgrading our healthcare system we the president has outlined a uh, significant improvement in our healthcare system talking about a specialty hospital we're looking at eye specialty hospital other, other specialty care in health Healthcare. We are embarking on regional healthcare opportunities in regional hospitals across the country. You know, we're aggressively working with the security sector in, in ensuring a, a more safer environment, a stronger community environment. So those components tied together with economics under the president's vision will see what you may be looking for, both from an investment perspective and from a, a diaspora perspective and moving back to Guyana. And then where do you fit? You know, for example, simple things like a large laundry service may sound not sexy, it may not sound like a big operation, but those are areas where, you know, new opportunities expand as a country grows. You know, what are things that you have seen in a developed world come about and you know if you go to certain areas in florida for example you know uh years ago it was just blank land yeah. now you look at it it's, it's it's you got malls going up you've got housing schemes going up there's no difference in guyana we're about to you know ronnie sarwan or a great cricketer is about to open one of the largest 
malls in Guyana shortly. When you look at the mall, you would think it's no difference than a U.S. mall, right? So we're expanding growth on, on, on many different sectors. And, and you know, you would not miss things that you, you may think you're going to miss in, in, the, in the North America or in Europe or in Toronto. I think you've got to help build that in Guyana. And I'm excited. I can, I can sell it. But I've lived it, and I know that I, I have benefited from it, and I want to see others come and be benefited, be part of that road process with us. You are totally correct, Dr. Ramsarup. You know, as you talk about Guyana there, I remember when I was 16 years of age, the very first country that I ever traveled to was Guyana. And Guyana is really at the bottom of my heart because I always remember Guyana as my first international uh, trip and the food and the place and the people so loving and so nice. So I think this could not have been a better opportunity for people from the international world to come back and to invest and benefit from all the bounties and the benefits that you all have to offer there in Guyana now. So we have already been talking for 10 minutes in this second segment. Uh, you got the last word. Tell us what you'd like to say in a couple of seconds as we conclude the show, Dr. Ramsar. Well, Guyana is open for investments. We look forward and welcome all uh, investors coming into Guyana or, or companies, indigenous companies are looking forward to working with the foreign companies coming in. Our people are looking forward to integration with the diaspora back again. We're looking forward to, to our president implementing his vision and his aggressive economic agenda. And we all look forward to the fact that we are part of it. We can see Guyana grow together. And, uh, you know, and we will, will ensure that we do it with accountability, transparency, and uh, ensure that, that the government delivers to our people. And ultimately, as the president said, creation of wealth for Guyanese. And he plans to make sure that happens very quickly and will benefit to our nation and around the world. Thank you very much, Dr. Ramsarup. It has really been a pleasure talking to you, and I'm sure the viewers, after looking at this show, you may have a couple thousands of people there willing to put their money down where they can get more benefit in investments there in Guyana under your leadership and under the leadership of the Honorable President, Dr. Erfan Ali. So once more, I know you're a busy man with a busy schedule, but we thank you again very much for taking the time to be with us on this show. So to our viewers worldwide there has been a pleasure, a blessing and an opportunity to speak to Dr. Ramsarup, the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer for the Guyana Office for Investment. And those of you who are thinking and pondering, this is an opportunity to make that investment in Guyana now. Contact his office. You can get things rolling and reaping in the very near future. Until then, always stay tuned to Alikma TV 24-7 online. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.